You are watching a Modern Air Combat Environment tutorial video made on behalf of Battlespace Simulations by Close Air Solutions. Here is a brief overview of what we will cover in this tutorial video. With collision avoidance enabled, entities will not go through each other when they impact. They will also avoid layers within the mission that are marked as collision avoidance layers. For example, water, buildings, fences, etc. The collision avoidance setting is enabled or disabled for all platforms on a per mission basis via the mission settings tab. When the collision avoidance is activated and an entity is selected, you will see a white rectangular box with the entity icon. This white rectangular box defines the avoidance area of the entity, known as the bounding box. Collision avoidance can be selectively disabled for any platform using the Platform Properties window in the Physical subsection. So as an example, if I have a stationary vehicle on the road here, and I route another vehicle directly through the stationary one, with collision avoidance enabled, it will drive around it to get it to its destination. If I run that again, with collision avoidance disabled, it will drive through it. We have discussed the avoidance of entities. Now we'll discuss the avoidance of objects. To avoid buildings and the like, MACE needs to understand the dimensions of the building. For entities placed within MACE, this is included in the entity information. But for cultural entities, MACE will need to be told the position and location of cultural objects that are not inserted via MACE. As we did in the tutorial on waypoints and routes, we need to insert a vector file. To recap, this is done from the File menu, Import, Vector Layer. For buildings, these vector files are usually called footprints. They will appear as overlays on the mission area, basically coloured blocks over where the buildings are. All imported vector layers can be seen in the Layer Manager, which is accessed from the View menu. Within the Layer Manager, you can see all the vector layers by expanding the Vector option. Layers that are to be avoided should be labelled as Auto Avoid. This can be seen by right-clicking on the layer and noting that the layer is checked as Auto Avoid. There are a number of other options that you can change about the appearance of vector layers. Just right click on the layer and go to the appearance option to open a bunch of very self explanatory preferences for the appearance of the layer, such as the area shading colours and the outlines. While we're in the layer manager, it's worth briefly noting that you can turn on and off layers in MACE here. One of the most useful applications for this is the ability to see the waypoints of all platforms by deselecting the option that says Selected Platform Only. This can be very helpful when editing, but most users only deselect this temporarily and then return to the Selected Platform Only selection after, as the mission area can get very cluttered. Now that we've imported all the building footprints, the ground entities with collision avoidance enabled will not pass through the buildings, but rather go around them because the building footprints are an auto avoid layer.
there are a few other aspects to collision avoidance that need to be considered. MACE includes a pathfinding algorithm that can be turned on or off at the entity level for human entities only. When pathfinding is active, the affected human entity will find a path to its destination, be it a waypoint, rally point or random walk location. If the human entity is following a route with more than one waypoint, it will find a path to its first waypoint, then once it reaches that waypoint, it will pathfind to the next waypoint, and so on. For the pathfinding function, we have to have at least one auto-avoid layer in the layer manager. MACE uses auto-avoid layers to create an in-memory avoidance grid. The avoidance grid it loaded at the beginning of the mission. You can see if it was successful in loading in the messages window, which can be accessed from the analysis menu. You can also press Ctrl and the G key to force recreation of the in-memory avoidance grid. An auto-avoid grid cell width in meters setting is located within the MACE system settings under the Options tab. This allows the user to adjust the width of the grid that the software requires to give a usable path. If a mission has a large grid and a small auto-avoid grid cell width is used, MACE will consume more memory and time to find each path. Making the width of the cells larger uses less memory and time, but some smaller alleys, lanes and pathways will not be considered. For example, when using MACE's pathfinding mode, the human might pass an alley that is clearly large enough for them to pass through, but proceed along a path that is longer but has more width between obstructions. I'll now demonstrate pathfinding. I'll give a human entity a waypoint on the other side of an urban area. I enable his pathfinding by clicking on the pathfinding button in the root subsection of the entity control menu. You now see a series of light blue dots that show the path that the entity will take to the next waypoint. Random walk is a very useful function for creating pattern of life within your missions. Human platforms can be given a radius and random walk. Then MACE will generate a waypoint at random within the radius. The unit will walk to the waypoint, whereupon MACE creates another waypoint within the radius, and so on. To activate random walk, click on the entity and then select Random Walk and the Radius from the Entity Control Ribbon Intent menu. You can use Random Walk in conjunction with Pathfinding in urban areas to get a great effect. Sometimes it can get crowded in tight urban areas and the humans can get in a bit of a jam trying to avoid each other. For this reason, there is an option within the mission settings to turn off collision avoidance when pathfinding. There is a more advanced use of the random walk function. Within MACE platform properties, you can tick the checkbox random walk destination. This means that entities that are placed in random walk mode will occasionally walk to the random walk destinations within their allocated radius and pause there for a random amount of time before moving on with their random walk. This is great for marketplace type situations or perhaps a guard commander occasionally checking on troops at sentry posts, for example. Having many units can clutter the mission area. It is useful to represent them as single icons. MACE has the ability to aggregate multiple units and represent them with NATO standard markings. 
To do this, select all the units you wish to be represented as a single icon, for example a platoon. To aggregate them, go to the View menu and select the Aggregation button drop-down, choosing Create Aggregate. You will see the entities grouped in an entity list in the Aggregate window. Note, this window is part of the mission settings and can be accessed at any time through there. The appearance of the icon on the map is dependent on what is chosen in these drop-down menus. You can name your aggregate and it will appear in the mission area next to the icon. You can now see the icon on the mission area. You can pick it up and move it like you do with any platform, but this time all the entities within the aggregate will move and maintain their positions relative to each other. If you double click on the icon, you will see all the individual units. There are a few more functions that you can perform with the Aggregate tab within the Mission Settings. All of your aggregates are listed down the left hand side and can be selected for editing easily. You can delete the aggregation by selecting the Delete Aggregate button. Note this does not delete the entities, just their association as an aggregate. You can export the aggregate as an XML file. This means that you can use that precise makeup of entities and aggregation in future scenarios. They will appear in the Group subsection of your Platforms menu in the Mission Builder. You don't have to select icons in the mission area and then create an aggregate. You can do it all from the Mission Settings Aggregate tab by creating a new aggregate and then adding the units from the map. When you've finished adding, press the Add from Map button again to deselect it. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video.